Hello and welcome to the tutorial where we will build on our WordPress plus lovable integration. Today the spotlight is on single pages. Pages based on templates with the same style and layout but different content. We'll see how they're built and what type of information they can fetch from our server site powered by Jet Engine. Let's jump right into the backend. Here in WordPress, my data lives in a custom content type called sunglasses. If we open its settings, you'll see that the REST API toggle is enabled. This gives us the single item endpoint we'll need to pass into an AI builder prompt for generating product pages by ID. Now let's look at the fields. These are the data points that will show up on the single pages. Name and description text area fields. Sport and frame shape select fields, price and number field, link, a text field where I store the URL of the actual store where I source the items. That's what we'll use for the buy now button on singles. The latest additions are gallery, a gallery field set to return an array with media ID and URL. That's different from a single media field, which should be formatted as a media URL. Accessories, a repeater field, where each row has an addition text field. This is where I can input accessories that come with a product and the number of rows can vary from item to item. The variety of field types matters because I want to demonstrate that Lovable can handle and display in singles different data structures stored with Jet Engine. And that's the kind of freedom you want when working with AI builders. I've already filled in some CCD items with real data, so let's move on to the query. Here's a query I created for the sunglasses items with REST API enabled, which means it generates its own endpoint URL. We'll use this endpoint to source the list of items displayed on the front end. And the reason for using a query instead of the basic CCD list endpoint is flexibility. A query lets me define conditions, for example only show items that are in stock, match a season or depend on a specific field value. Queries also serve as the base for filters and filter arguments. That's a topic we already covered in the previous tutorial, so I will not go into the setup again. Just keep in mind that the query endpoint is what powers both the listings and the filters you'll see later in Lovable, and that query parameters names should be passed in prompt along with descriptions of filters you want. Alright, now that the query is ready, it's time to move on to the actual prompt I'll be putting into Lovable. Even though the task I'm asking for is pretty complex, I've kept the prompt itself surprisingly short. That wasn't by accident, I've already gone through several rounds of trial and error, testing how Lovable reacts to similar instructions. That way I know this exact version gives me the result I want. And I didn't do it alone, I used ChatGPT to translate my plain non-coder wording into something lovable as another AI can understand without confusion. From my experience, it's a quicker process than experimenting directly in Lovable's AI chat. So here's the full prompt. At the top, I'm telling Lovable exactly what I want. A directory site with listings on the homepage and single pages for each item. Next, I write where Lovable should source the data from my site. I give it the two endpoints, one for single items by ID and one for the query that powers listings and filters. I also list the query arguments by name so Lovable knows what parameters it can use for filters. Then comes the schema. Basically a quick map of all fields in my CCD. I note what type each one is so Lovable treats the data correctly. And I've learned that even fields that are numbers in the backend, like price, often get serialized as strings through the API. If you don't mark that properly, you might run into errors when trying to use price as a filter. For the more complex fields like gallery and the repeater, I didn't just guess. ChatGPT helped me write them in the exact format that Lovable understands. Gallery is defined as an array of objects with IDs and URLs and accessories is defined as an object that I later normalize into simple list of strings. 
Without structuring them this way, Lovable tends to get confused and won't display these values correctly. In general, anytime you see an error when generating a website with Lovable, you can find the cause of that error in logs and fix that through additional prompt or fix your initial prompt, which was the way I went. Having presented the sources for data, I then explained the website layout and structure, first for the main page and individual listings, and then in more detail for the single pages defined by each item's ID. Here I describe how the items gallery should work, which is fairly typical. I list what data needs to be displayed, basically all the CCD fields I created and filled on the backend. At the bottom of this section, I ask for a compact grid of other products pulled from the query endpoints, so every single page feels like a part of directory. And finally, a few UX rules for filter behavior and dynamic search. So with the prompt finished, I paste it straight into Lovable's prompt window. Once I hit submit, Lovable takes a few minutes to process everything. Behind the scenes, it's reading the schema, connecting to the endpoints and building out the listings, filters and single pages. When the build is ready, Lovable shows me a preview. On the left, I can see the sidebar with the prompt I submitted and a breakdown of how an AI builder understood my request. Let's look at the website in full screen mode. On the home page, we get the listings displayed in clean grid with filters in the sidebar. The listing cards follow the structure from my prompt and the filters work straight away. Now let's click into a single page. Here the gallery works just as expected. The first image shows up as the main one with thumbnails underneath. Clicking a thumbnail swaps it into the main display and the active thumbnail gets a highlighted border. On the right you see all product details pulled straight from the backend fields. Title, sport, frame shape, price, description and the list of accessories. Note that in my case the bullet dot renders a bit low. There's also the buy now button linking directly to the store. At the bottom we have a compact grid of other products pulled from the same query endpoint, but excluding the current item. Each card is simplified, just a thumbnail, short card, price, sport type and button. Although I think I didn't ask for the button in this case. Clicking a listing takes you right to that item single page. So we've got the full directory site working and we can update it dynamically from the server and all we did was just one short prompt. You probably noticed my prompt said nothing about styling at all. Lovable covered the basics on its own. This is the kind of default website style the AI builder gives you. No matter how many times I try similar site generations, without styling instructions, the layout stays pretty much the same. The only things that vary are the color palette and sometimes it adds little details, like a CDA line near the logo or somewhere else on the page. I think it's cool that Lovable makes its own choices like emphasizing the price, turning product features into tags, or adding that nice image scale-in effect. And the best part is, our single pages are ready for small screens right out of the box. They look quite professional to me. Changing the style is easy from here. Through prompts, you just tell the general look you want. For example, sporty with bold colors and sharp angles. Or get into micro details like fonts, colors and icons. Well, this turned out to be a really easy way to build a full directory site. We didn't create any single page templates, we didn't set conditions for when they should appear and we didn't even fine-tune the query to exclude duplicates. Yet we still got all of that and more, because the AI Builder handled it in just a few minutes. The CrocoBlock plus AI Builder exploration is just beginning, so let's continue in the next video. Meanwhile, hit like, 
drop your questions and comments and subscribe. See you soon. Thank you.